Among those who have been granted beam time in the experimental halls of BER2, there are few who get by without the help of Klaus Kiefer and his team from the Sample Environment Group. Kiefer and his colleagues are well-known experts on extreme conditions and strong coffee and whatever else their users require. They help prepare experimental setups and make sure that everything runs smoothly during experiments. They also constantly improve existing methods and develop new sample environments. In the sample environment group, we provide the physical parameters for the users, like very low temperatures, very high magnetic fields or very high pressure, or for example, very precise temperature control. Here, for example, we have a cell that can regulate the temperature at about room temperature in a very precise way down to below 5 millikelvin deviation from the set point. And this is good when you want to study some physical phase transitions um, in very detail. BER2 is operated by the Helmholtz Centrum Berlin. It's located near Wannsee Lake, a popular recreation area in southwestern Berlin. On the campus, the expertise in neutron research has grown over decades. The first reactor was built here in 1959. BER2 became operational as a neutron source for research in 1973 and was completely modernized in 1991. HZB employs about 800 permanent staff on the Wannsee campus and hosts several hundred visiting scientists a year. They come from a wide range of fields, physicists and engineers, chemists and biologists, archaeologists, mineralogists, and even art historians. With the latest upgrade of BER2 in 2011, efficiency and performance have been improved once again. In the course of the upgrade, some major changes have been implemented in the entire setup. A new cold source has been installed that markedly increases the amount of neutron flux available for the experiments. Even more important is the change from the old nickel-based guide system to the very latest super mirror guides. Altogether, 142 meters of neutron guides, shared on six guides, have been replaced. And this combination of the cold source and the super mirror guides gives us factors of 5 to 10 improvement in the performance of the instruments. That means that you can do the same experiment 5 to 10 times quicker. Okay, now the other thing that we've actually done is we've been able to change the outline or the outlay of all the guide systems to optimize the possibilities. That gives us new positions for new instrumentation as well as giving us the best profile of the neutrons for experiments themselves. So for example, for the tomography, we could create much bigger guides, meaning that bigger objects can be, can be um, experimented on and, and fully um, illuminated by the neutrons themselves. The new tomography bunker has become the second home of Nikolai Karjilov, who's spent many hours here investigating everything from race cars to tomato plants. It's not only my home, this is also a temporary home for many users coming here. So I'm responsible for it, to keep it clean and <laughs> to have a nice conditions for the users and also to um, provide new methods, of course, for investigations. We investigate uh, macroscopic samples. So we are able to investigate fuel cells. This is a big fuel cell. So with neutrons, we can transmit the metal and see the water production in the fuel cell. Susan Shaw's samples are small, but she also greatly benefits from the possibilities of neutron scattering. We are here a group of mineralogists working on the instrument. Uh, so we measure not only synthetic material, also minerals, so material from nature. The advantage with neutron diffraction is that we have not 
to destroy the minerals, we can measure on coarse grain material or on the mineral just as it is, so without making a powder out of it. In the two experimental halls around the reactor, Helmholtz Centrum Berlin offers access to a great variety of neutron instruments, including tomography, powder diffraction, neutron spectroscopy, and others. Both thermal and cold neutrons are available. With the latest upgrade, the cold source has been exchanged to respond to the increasing demand for cold neutrons in soft matter research. You know, that's a really important shift. The cold neutrons are particularly powerful um, in the case of um, larger scale structures. Now, larger scale structures are things like polymers and also biological materials. So where we have got sufficient, significant increases in our um, instrumentation suite is in things like bioreflectometer, which allows um, the measurement of, of real biological samples, membranes, for example, with proteins embedded and so on, to understand how the proteins sit within um, realistic um, biological systems. BioREF is HZB's latest instrument in surface sensitive neutron scattering. Roland Steitz and his team developed it in collaboration with the University of Heidelberg. The setup is quite unique. In fact, BioREF isn't one machine, but two. So this is a combination of a neutron reflectometer, which you see here, with a neutron beam traveling in the horizontal, and an infrared spectrometer, where the infrared beam is traveling in the vertical. So they hit at a sample position, and then you get sort of much more complete information on a system at the same time, on the same spot, with that instrument. BioREF and other instruments produce large amounts of complex data that can be difficult to analyze. Jojo Biela is head of the new soft matter theory group and provides support for the preparation of experiments and the interpretation of results. So what is measured here at the Helmholtz Center Berlin uh, is, for instance, the structure of uh, polymeric brushes. So these are the red, these red polymers. Is a polymer brush. Uh, and uh, one important question is one important question is what the structure of uh, such a brush is, and then the second important qu uh, question is how do these uh, soft interfaces interact with with biological material? What we see here is uh, a little protein which is pulled into this brush, and here we are doing computer simulations to help um, the experiments uh, to explain uh, what the driving forces are for protein adsorption, for instance. So we can guide the experiments because we can tell them maybe what to change and what kind of parameters are important to change. Um, and then, of course, help with the design of new material, materials. HZB cooperates with more than 400 partners at German and international universities, research institutions and companies. 70% of all beam time at HZB is reserved for external users. And there's more than just the neutron source. Here at Helmholtz Zentrum Berlin, we operate two large-scale facilities, the neutron reactor BR2 and the photon or light source BESI2. And we operate them for scientists from all over the world. These scientists put in proposals. The proposals are peer-reviewed. And then scientists come here to perform their experiments jointly with HZB staff. Bella Lake works in condensed matter physics, mainly in magnetism and superconductivity. For her and many other users, information about the quality of her samples is crucial. But what's particularly good about working here is that there are a lot of supporting labs so, for example, you can make your samples here using the furnace labs, powder and single crystal samples. You can come to this lab I'm standing in and do um, X-ray Lowy and powder diffraction on those samples. And you can also do bulk properties measurements in the bulk properties labs, for example, heat capacity and susceptibility. And that's all before you take it to the neutrons and do neutron scattering. One of the instruments that have benefited most from the recent upgrade is FLEX, the cold neutron three-axis spectrometer. 
Klaus Habicht and his team installed it at a new position at the end of a neutron guide. The instrument now has a double focusing monochromator that allows more intensity to be brought to the sample position. In addition, the energy transfer range has been substantially extended and the polarized neutron capabilities enhanced. The result? Flex can now measure smaller samples with very good energy resolution. After improving Flex and bringing it up to date, Klaus Habich now has a new project ahead. But this upgrade allowed us to create a completely new beamline. This is a beamline dedicated for methods and prototype testing for the European Spallation Source, which is coming online from 2019 on. Here we provide today already measurement possibilities, experimental possibilities to test new methods and prototypes, which it will in future be operational at the ESS. The other thing, which is the most exciting thing, is we have the high field magnet, which is going to be providing the highest magnetic fields in the world for neutrons. And that comes online next year. So that's what we're really excited about. This has um, been a lot of work to, to, to achieve this, um, but it opens up some really new possibilities for my research and I know the research of many other scientists uh, worldwide as well.